continuation of my previous video that I made on Azure and Databricks. So in this uh, video, I'll uh, give you guys a little bit perspective over the industry standards, how industry just uh, use those types of data, how uh, uh, industry use business data and big data to get uh, transformed into the cloud platform, uh, like transfer them to the cloud platform, how they are transforming those things, how they are, how the data is getting um, analyzed, how the data is getting loaded in the uh, backend, how uh, there is streaming happening. So I'll give a little uh, hands-on overview, you know, uh, so, so that I'll not go uh, deep down into this because as, as, as many of us, like uh, they are new to this, so they will find some difficulties on this. Okay, uh, so for, the, uh, for that reason, I'll just uh, give little overview, like uh, how we are doing this type of uh, things with the data for the analytical purpose. Like after this stage, there is analytical uh, stage where the analysis on this data are performed over this data. So yeah. So I'll just uh, do a few hands-on. Okay, there are some use cases I have made. So like based upon those use cases, I'll perform a little bit of um, operations on that, how uh, everything is happening. So side by side, I also like uh, illustrate or explain each and every uh, command I'm using for uh, like uh, performing that uh, particular operation. Okay, so yeah, let's get started. Okay, cool. So now we're into the Azure portal. So after you log into Azure, uh, you'll see this kind of interface in front of you. So this is basically the portal. After you open the portal, this interface will show up. And as you can see that uh, there are various uh, Azure services, like there is a uh, cost management, SQL servers, data, many types of uh, services are there. and as I told in the previous uh, that this video will be like a sort of overview of Azure portal and database so that uh, to give you an understanding and an idea that how data engineers actually work um, in the industry, how they perform those types of things. So just to give a little overview and in the next video, I'll go deep down into this. Like I'll uh, show every aspect, like every codes and also like how uh, everything is happening in detail overview. Okay, so in this video, it will be like, I'll just explore a little bit of um, services that uh, a data engineer actually use. So yeah. So previously, uh, after you, as you can see that I also use uh, this services previously, like uh, for uh, performing some sorts of um, data management and data analysis. So like uh, this is a workspace. This is a, you call, uh, this is a database workspace that uh, usually data engineers use. Like uh, over there, there are various clusters. They spin up the clusters and also like there is a notebook. So with that thing, they just transform data. Also like if they perform any data collaboration, also like if they make any connections in the link services where they're uh, in the link services in the ADF, so those things can be collaborated with the notebook uh, according with the clusters. And also like data can be uh, transformed into various formats. Like uh, when the data are actually coming from various resources, like data can be come from through an API, uh, like the, there can be like uh, from various uh, REST APIs, also from various uh, websites you can call and from various types of data storage, it, it can be like, mm, uh, uh, database, uh, SQL DB, also it, 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 can, it can be from uh, any data lake or a data warehouse. Okay, so that time uh, we have to, what we have to perform, like uh, suppose our industry want a specific type of data. It can be a data file, it can be a CSV file, or it can be a JSON file. Now, when many various types of data formats are coming in the same place, now as a data engineer, your job is to just change the format. Like you have to just transform the format into a particular format that the industry wants. Okay, because uh, suppose for a company, they want to uh, like after our part finish that then uh, there are business analysts or data analysts who actually take those this fresh data, fresh collected and uh, clean data 
uh, from us and they perform some sort of analysis so that they can get any business solution from that okay now uh, first of all let's see as i'm talking of the data bit okay so there is also azure data bit services present in the azure portal if somehow you don't have any uh, you don't have that access to the azure portal like if you don't have any pre account or if you don't have any credit card because uh, for creating an azure portal azure uh, site you have to create an um, uh, you have you need a credit card because for signing up you need a credit card and if suppose anybody don't have that credit card uh, they can easily like log in through free of cost uh, through databricks community suppose they want to perform uh, basically only work with the databricks so now there is a disadvantage of that is in azure you can access various type of storage resources and you can access various type of services and also streaming platforms but if you are uh, if you access uh, only databricks like uh, if you want uh, only uh, log in from this databricks community edition that time uh, you will not able to like get the access of other various storage accounts like is suppose for a databricks uh, community edition uh, there is single workspace under single workspace the default storage that the dbfs storage that databricks will provide you have to work with that one okay so now uh, as we have the azure portal uh, tool so now let's start with the uh, databricks okay so now as I'm, as you can see that is this is a project i written uh, project so this project is uh, nothing but uh, is a type of databricks workspace okay now why it's compartment uh, into various type of workspace now uh, think of one thing like suppose we are, you are uh, in an industry suppose you are working in a pharma industry uh, or a uh, medical industry like uh, for example take any good uh, well known uh, medical medical healthcare industry so there are various types of uh, operations performed like for data scientists for business analysis for uh, data engineers for business intelligence engineer for uh, data analytics every every person every team has some particular work to do with the data cool now as a data engineer or as a team suppose i am working in a particular project so that time i will make a same workspace a uh, different workspace under the same azure portal because uh, as you can know that big big companies have their own private cloud and everything are hosted in their private cloud now uh, when the private cloud you have access to various type of teams like there are various team working for various sectors in the industry like it can be a uh, sales sector it can be marketing sector it can be pharma sector it can be any kind of sector now as a data engineer team uh we will like uh, given an access to a particular workspace and as you can see the, uh, there is a vpn peering so over here we can just peer the access over here and we can create a, a particular uh, attachment under the vpn of the uh, under the same cloud private cloud now let's launch the workspace okay. Now it's take, it will take a little bit of time. Okay, cool. Now you can see the Azure Databricks uh, workspace at open. And under this particular workspace, I have also created few notebooks and also like I've created one uh, cluster, you can see. Here is a cluster. Now uh, you'll ask, you'll ask that what is uh, this notebook of all? What they use for? Like what is the cluster? Why cluster are used? Suppose, uh, as in the previous video, I also mentioned this thing that when you are performing anything in the cloud, you don't have uh, locally uh, local processors or local computers to perform any application. They are they are supported by these virtual machines virtual processes or the virtual storage you can call that 
Okay, so cluster is nothing but a node. You can call a particular computer, a particular single computer, which are running. There are virtual machines, there are storage, uh, connected storage. Also, there are virtual nodes. They are used to perform the analysis. Like you can show that there are uh, cores, like uh, in our processor, in our computer processor. You uh, you guys seen that there are cores. So over there, you can see when I I'll create the cluster, you will see that there are cores written. Like uh, this processor has that much core, that giga, uh, gigabyte core. So okay. Now we'll see that uh, what are notebooks and why notebooks are used by the data engineers. Now <clears throat> you can see uh, I'll open in one notebook, uh, say work. Now we'll be seeing that uh, there is one cluster as I saw, uh, as I uh, over there, you see one cluster. So this cluster is attached over here because. When we are, as I told in the previous uh, list, that uh, when you want to perform something, you need some processors or the cores running. So that time, it in notebook is used to perform those operations, or you can call like if you want to make any connection, like if you want to establish a connection between your uh, data, uh, various type of data storage, and also you you want to import the data. Uh, in the data table and then perform any kind of analysis on that, perform any aggregations or any types of uh, queries you want to uh, do on the data set. So that time uh, notebook is used. And also like, uh, as I told, uh, we can also fetch REST API, uh, data from the REST API. Also, we can uh, also work with the C framework uh, uh, that's called uh, .NET framework. Okay, so now, uh, as you can see, I previously performed some uh, operations over there. Okay. So, as I told that uh, a particular workspace has a particular block storage, or you can uh, uh, call that particular storage in the DBFS. DBFS is nothing but the unified storage system for database. Okay. Now, in the database block storage, you can see that there is a file store, there is data sets, there is a result, and there is one image. Cool. Now, this file store actually stores the, mm, the, the, the main thing, the, the main uh, data set that uh, you import it. Like, suppose you import any file. Okay. So those files will be uh, stored over here in this file store. Like it can be CSV file, it can be JSON file, irrespective of any file. Okay. Now, the second is database data set. These are nothing but uh, data set, but a generalized form. Like there are compartments, like there are some um, inbuilt libraries. Okay, some inbuilt libraries are stored in this data set. Okay, like if this is not provided by the database only, they have inbuilt libraries. Suppose you are performing uh, any machine learning algorithm, you are running any machine learning algorithm, suppose any supervised algorithm. So that time the, the data set or the uh, Python, uh, so that time you need some Python library. So these libraries are actually stored in the, over here. You have to call those library uh, from this uh, storage, from this particular location to this notebook. Cool. Yeah. Then there is database result. Okay. Then what is database result? So database results are nothing but uh, suppose you perform any analysis, perform any sorts of uh, data transformation. After that, you perform any like uh, queries on the table. You are storing that thing into some new area, like suppose a new space. That time, those things are stored in the database result. And as well as is a user, this is nothing but a particular user given to access to the user where they can store any import file, they can import anything over there. So these are the things that specially used for the storage in the particular workspace of a database. Cool. Now, uh, there are some commands that need to perform uh, or to access the file and to manipulate the file, various other files, data sets. Okay, so before going to that, I want to tell that uh, in this notebook, you can perform uh, various sets of uh, 
things with uh, different types of languages. Like you can perform with the Python, you can uh, perform any operations with the Java, you can uh, perform any operations with the Scala. You can also, as I told, that uh, there is also supported, now newly supported by the um, .NET framework. So it also supports .NET framework, and also you can perform uh, PySpark, that is PySQL, and also you can perform uh, Python operations, like Python machine learning mo models can be run in this notebook. Okay, for that reason, uh, suppose you are performing any machine learning algorithm, uh, so that time you have to take a high power cluster because high concurrency cluster. Otherwise, if you take any uh, standalone or standard cluster, then it will be very uh, difficult for uh, to run the cluster because it will take it will consume uh, many more cores. Okay, many more processors in simple words. Okay, now uh, as you can see this. What is this uh, like percentage thing? Like you can see in the work, if I default by default, I choose Scala for performing everything in the in this particular notebook. But through this percentage, you can change, you can switch to any different language and work on that. This is the beauty of uh, this notebook that these are called nothing but magic commands. Magic command is nothing but uh, suppose you want to perform some something in different language, irrespective of what you are performing with a default language. But suppose your default language is, in my case, is Scala. So now you want to perform, uh, you have imported this set and you uh, want to perform any sorts of operations on that. Then you can, uh, SQL operations on that. Then you can write the magic command, then the particular language name, and then you can uh, uh, write in queries uh, you want to apply on the tables, particular tables of the data set. Now we will see that how you can uh, import the data set. Now, suppose there are, you can see there are common tasks. Under common tasks, suppose you want to create a table. Okay, by uh, like, first of all, if, if you want to import a data set, then through this, uh, you can import any data set. It can be any file, any JSON file, CSV file, or anything. Okay, so to click to browse, you can uh, like directly import it from your PC or device. Okay, now you want to just import, you can create also the table, uh, data tables or various, various uh, tables uh, present over here to click uh, create table. Okay, then uh, talking of the clusters which is the main thing because other the, without cluster, you can't perform anything uh, in notebook because it will not work. Okay, so. For that reason, you have to click new cluster and you have to write the cluster name. And uh, the, as, I'm, as I have told you that there are three types of cluster generally present in the database, that is high concurrency, standard, and single node. Okay, so if you choose standard, uh, you for basic production work, you can work with the standard. Now, if you were to perform it for practice, practicing any sorts of, uh, on the little bit of um, data weighted, uh, that time you can perform, uh, you can work with the single node, and if you want to do deep analysis, like you know, if you want to run any machine learning algorithm, uh, you have to run a uh, machine a machine learning model. So that time you have to use high concurrency because for deep down analysis you need high performance and high code. Cool. Yeah. Now over here you can see that there is auto scaling because it, uh, this is a uh, beauty of every cloud uh, services. Like you don't have to scale locally or scale manually the server. Those can be auto scale uh, and also like you can also, there is a terminate op option that if you terminate uh, within 20, uh, you can terminate at any point of time. Like you can choose it to 10 minutes, you can choose it to um, 20 minutes, anything. So like I choose it to 10 minutes, so if, if I choose 10 minutes, then after running for 10 minutes, the cluster will automatically get terminated, means it automatically detach. Now, there are worker types. Now, what is worker? Suppose uh, you, you have heard in anything, uh, if you work with uh, digital electronics, uh, like there uh, is a, a thing called worker node, worker circuit. And under that uh, worker gate, under that 
there are uh, you can heard of the tea flip flop okay so there is a master work a master slave working over there master slave the uh, circuit uh, working over there the same logic also uh, using this thing also like uh, suppose there you have as as i can as i told that you have four memory okay so four cores eight cores so you can choose one general core okay after that uh, you can choose a minimum core that will run and suppose you need uh, any extra core any point of time like extra virtual machines at any point of time suppose you suddenly you need to run any machine learning algorithm so that time machine learning model so that time you can uh, take take up this extra maximum code with pot instances like uh, if you if you click on this pot instances like if you uh, click on it that so at that time like when the uh, at the time of working it will automatically call the excess code that uh, means uh, it will automatically call uh, those extra vms like okay now there are uh, various uh, types of driver type you can choose okay so this all about like i'm not going deep down to this because in this video as i told i will just give a little bit of overview of this data bit especially data bit now let's go to the notebook aspect so now there as you can see there is notebook so i'm just opening a different i'm opening this notebook only <clears throat> okay so whenever you want to work with the notebook you have to first start the cluster and wait for a few minutes because it takes a little bit of time then you will perform everything because other than that if you don't run the cluster and uh, connect it with the notebook then nothing to use like yeah uh, it is waste of thing because you can't perform anything okay now you have to remember uh, basically three uh, most things if you are uh, more three command type if you are working with the file system okay so now uh, if you want to change from scala to file then you can just write uh, percentage percentage gone percentage and ls okay it is directly uh, you change it to a file okay file management system like you can open up files you can uh, manipulate files you can uh, import files you can work with uh, various files okay it can be json csv anything right cool now um, uh, there are some thing that you need to be aware of like uh, there are very file uh, system commands that you need to be aware of that one is that dbut now what is dbuts dbuts is nothing but a utility that is given to specially to a notebook to perform or to manipulate with the uh, various file system cool like if you uh, uh, through this db um, on the banner through this dbutil like through this dbutil if you like i'm not uh, with help okay through the dbutil.help you to uh, if you write this command you will see that uh, this command will list it down all the functionalities all the commands that actually have under this dbutils library and you can use any of the commands to perform any operation particular set of operations on the file system right cool okay now there is another thing that is dbutils dot secret okay for the secret do so suppose uh, you establish a connection between sql database and your node now there in the sql database there is a client password and client ids there so now as a developer you can't uh, give the data or hard coded it like you can't provide openly uh, Store the data. Store those credentials, important credentials, because then it will can uh, you will be uh, like there will be a data breach. Okay, like for the privacy purpose, um, data breach also have a security, high security. That is, 
through, through this security model, they have bind up this thing that uh, you can keep it in a particular security storage that is key vault. Okay, in the key vault, you can through secrets you will get uh, you can store your access to you can get the access token or you can uh, get the cash token from there. And after you uh, were like um, take the data from those important credentials data, you can just keep in the secrets and secrets will just uh, get the uh, will be automatically stored in the key vault, right? Then one important thing is DB utils util dot wait. Okay. Okay, so what this we get to. Oh. Now, uh, suppose uh, you are passing any parameter from a master notebook to a terminal. That time you will require this type of, uh, you have to pass the parameter. Then from master notebook, you can pass the parameter to UGITs. UGITs are nothing but you can call, uh, for example, um, uh, in, in in any uh, generalized programming language, you can see in Java, for example, taking uh, taking an example of Java. So uh, you guys have seen that in Java, um, like uh, when you are pass any parameters to a function or arguments to the function, that time you write the function name and under uh, in the close bracket you pass the parameter. So this feature is also added to the notebook. With this widgets, through widgets you can actually creating a pathway for passing the arguments, passing the parameter. Okay, so I think this much of information is enough for this video because, as I told, I'll give a little bit of an intro, and in the next video I'll go deep down because I'll I'll go uh, I'll give a deep overview on everything. I'll also perform. Uh, I'll run various codes over here, how to do those things, how to work with the data, various types of data, and how to create pipelines, how to connect various services in the ADS, uh, link services, how to create uh, batch data. So those things I'll, I'll give an overview in the next video and uh, hope you guys understand what I share, trying to uh, like explore and what I trying to give you. Uh, so, hope you like the video and as I always tell that if you are new to this channel, please subscribe to my channel and also share with your friends because I want to, uh, I want you guys to spread my video so that everybody can learn from this, some things, some important things and as always, okay, bye.